The law of tonnage, also known as the tonnage rule. We use it all the time, but you won't find it in one of these, or one of these, or a call rigs book like this. But you will find it in this video. Stick around at the end and I'll also show you three ways to avoid getting run over. So let's fire up those mains and get this video underway. Now before I even get started, I have to point out that there's going to be some people that say, oh, those regulations do cover it, but they don't say it that way. Basically for us, the law of tonnage basically says whoever the big boat is, they're going to have the right of way. And this is really referring back to uh, physics. The law of physics is going to override everything else. A little guy is usually more agile and maneuverable than a big guy is. Right there we just saw a... Uh, ULCV, an ultra large container vessel, go by, and basically it says it doesn't matter whether I have the right of way or not, he, he, he can't move, so I need to be out of his way. And there's some people that are going to say, well, that's uh, this law says that and that law says that, but the law of tonnage basically says, look, if you're little, you got to stay out of the big guy's way. It can get pretty infuriating when you have some recreational boater try to cite some law to you why they have the right of way and uh, we try to tell them that look we can try to do everything we can but we can't change the laws of physics and uh, so since they can maneuver better than anyone else I think that's really what sums up the whole idea of what the law of tonnage is about so if you're under sail or you have a power boat and you see a big boat coming it's kind of best just to kind of give them a wide berth. They do what they can do, and we all do what we can do to stay out of everyone's way. But the bigger you are, the harder it is to maneuver. Just try to stay out of everyone's way. I try to stay out of people's ways that are bigger than me, and uh, it's going to help us all if uh, you do the same. So that brings us to the next thing, and that's uh, a couple ways to keep from getting run over. One of the easiest ways, most obvious, is posting a proper lookout. When you're looking out, you can see all kinds of things. Sometimes you've got the ocean all to yourself, and uh, if you're still looking out, you see all kinds of things. In this case, a whale off the Jersey coast feeding on a bait ball. I had a couple of times where they came right out of water. Well, you know, half the whale anyway. It was pretty cool, but unfortunately when you pull out the camera, by that time it's already gone. But this is what I got for you. But anyway, keeping a proper lookout is a good idea for a million reasons. Not the least of which is that a lot of things sneak up on you. We used to be on a run that would take us up to Albany, New York. And on the weekends, sometimes you see a lot of uh, recreational boaters hanging out and we'd be going up there with a light barge and I'd say why are these people in the middle of the channel they're not getting out of the way and an old friend of mine a pilot he told me that sometimes when you're on the water in a smaller boat and you look up and see this great big boat your perception gets changed and you think that it's a lot further away than it actually is so look the water belongs to everybody we try to respect your rights Hopefully you can respect ours and we'll probably all somehow live within the laws of physics. So um, have a proper lookout. Look for stuff. You see somebody, um, you know, that brings us to the second thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is if you're not sure, especially for the people that are sailing, they're not sure if they're uh, going to be a problem or not, 
Almost all commercial vessels in this area, anyway, all have to monitor channel 13, which is a low power channel. And you can come up on channel 13 and, you know, let's just say, hey, tugboat. Sometimes there's a whole bunch of us. So you might say, like, the northbound tugboat with the barge. This is the westbound sailboat. Um, am I going to be a problem? That sort of stuff. And we usually have a uh, radar and all kinds of other tools that will help us give us a proper CPA or closest point of approach and uh, we can help you know sometimes if you call me early enough I can just move a few degrees and it will change everything for you and you won't have to readjust your sails or anything but if you wait till the last minute sometimes I'll expend a lot of time energy and a lot of horsepower and a lot of fuel to try to get out of your way only for you to move anyway and so uh, Calling us on 13 is not the worst thing that you could do. In fact, uh, sometimes just knowing that you see me and I see you takes a lot of stress out of the situation. Now this next one is a little odd. Everyone, you know, we, we're all encouraged. In, in our line of work, we have to go to school and get licenses and test and do all kinds of stuff. And there are people that take power squadron courses and people that do different things and get their own little licenses and that sort of stuff and all that's wonderful but it's really important not to uh, be more focused on the stuff you learn in school or in the book than it is it's more important I should say that to be on the water and make good decisions and what I mean by that is as odd as it sounds there are many times that we'll meet somebody you know, uh, when I say meet somebody, I mean that means I'm going one direction and somebody's coming the other direction at me. And some pleasure boats um, will almost put themselves or me in harm's way to try to do what we call a one-whistle pass, which is port to port, which is the right way and the way that we normally want things to work. But you don't have to do this. This isn't a road. You're not going to get a ticket for passing somebody on a two-whistle pass or starboard to starboard. If, um, if it makes sense to go that way, go that way. Another example of this might be um, there's, a, there's a route that we take when we go up to Philadelphia. When we go up the Delaware River, there's a... A lot of us commercial guys that have the draft that can do this will run outside of the channel to give the whole channel to the ships for a majority of the route up there. When we get to a place called the Elbow of Cross Ledge, it seems like both sides squeeze in really tight and you got to get around. Uh, there's a buoy and a lighthouse there and all that sort of stuff. And uh, there'll, be, there'll be people, you know, uh, pleasure boats that might draw three to five, maybe six feet of water and they can go almost a mile in either direction and they have to go right in that channel they want to be in that channel and it doesn't matter if there's an 1100 foot container ship or god forbid me and my boat and uh pushing a 400 foot barge loaded with two million gallons of oil they're going to go right in the middle of the channel and they're going to tell me this is what it says and they have the tide and they have the right of way and blah 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 when all they'd really have to do is just move a little bit outside of the channel. They've got plenty of water under them. We are what's considered constrained in dr by draft. In other words, if I can't get out of the channel because I'll run aground in certain areas, but you might be able to. So don't be, don't adhere yourself so much to the rules that you can't make good decisions. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, Maybe you'd consider subscribing. It's a free and easy way to support the channel and help us grow. I enjoy making these videos and it does take a little bit of time and sure makes it a lot easier when uh, I know that there's people that watch and want to see this sort of content. But anyway, maybe you like, subscribe, write me a comment, ring the bell, whatever you want to do. And uh, hey, next week or every Tuesday, I release a new video. At least I try to at any rate. And next Tuesday, I'm going to start talking about the different makeups. Sometimes you've noticed some tugboats push barges from the stern and the notch. Other tugboats push alongside. Some push head to head. Some push head to tails. And sometimes you'll see tugs that are towing on the wire. You might say, why do they do that? 
Well, we're going to tackle all that in the next week's video, so come on along with us. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. You guys stay safe.